when you do get new tires, we're gonna have to add chain links. Hey, what's going on? Today I'm going to be doing some minor upgrades to the Telerius Sting here. I'm gonna be throwing on some heavy duty motorcycle tubes, probably something I should have done when I very first got the bike, but I haven't done very many crazy rides, so hopefully this will help when I do. And then I'm gonna throw on this 48 tooth sprocket to give me a little torque on the lower end. But I'm gonna be riding over to my buddy Tanner's house because I don't think my plastic tire levers are gonna do the trick on getting these tires off. Also, while I'm at it, I'm going to be reviewing this crazy looking air compressor. The company Hoto sent it over to me to check out. So I'm gonna check that out, see how it compares to my Nolkson air compressor that I've already used. So stick around. All right, let's get loaded up. This hotel company also threw in a little flashlight for me to check out too. All right, so I'm all loaded up, headed over to my buddy Tanner's house. I got two tubes in the back got two air compressors. Uh, what else do I have? Um, that flashlight and sprocket. And I even threw in my charger because I think we're going to go for a ride after we get everything taken care of. Uh, might as well charge the battery while we're working on it, the bike. A question that I get asked fairly often, especially on my unboxing and setup video, is the Teleria street legal and all i'm gonna say about that is i've been pulled over once the officer took a look at my headlight and tail light and said use hand signals and that's all he said no ticket no nothing so with that being said i did buy the uh, turn signal kit with the brake light and i'll do an installation video on that Anyway, I changed the oil in this thing, and there's also been a little controversy about that. If you haven't seen my oil changing instructional video, there seems to be some back and forth on the type of oil to use, as well as the correct method in filling up the gear shift or the uh, gearbox oil. So I kind of want to do a video on that. I have a few friends who haven't changed their oil yet. Oh boy, new traffic pattern ahead. Actually, this is kind of nice. But I have a few friends who haven't changed their oil yet, so we're gonna do a drain compared to my oil and see if it matches up and then refill based on some of the feedback I've gotten. But I'm fairly certain my oil change is okay. It's a few miles over to my buddy's house. So much road construction going on in my town. It's everywhere. Last time I came through there, they had it blocked off with an excavator, but it looks like I can make it through. We'll see. Got some off-roading. Get it. All right, I'm not gonna cut through this one. I'm gonna go through the uh, university campus up here. Take the long way. You know, some of the comments I get is how pretty this area is, and I obviously agree. Welcome to Weaver State, home of the Wildcats. A little basketball trivia for you. Uh, which rookie of the year, who is a current NBA player, graduated from Weaver State? Let me know in the comments. I wish he played for the Jazz, but they're a mess right now. Almost there. 
This part's scary at night because there's always deer. We are in the Suron, the house of Suron. There's Tanner's Suron. Has the Shy Battery Systems Gladiator 60 compact. Thing's awesome. There's actually a link in my description to get 5% off. So uh, before we jump into my bike up on the stand, I want to show you uh, Tanner's Suron. I talked about it a little bit when I pulled in, but again, he has the Shy Battery Gladiator. And he also has a riser, so it makes his bike a lot taller. Just uh, upgraded his rear shock, upgraded some front shocks. He's the man to tell you everything he's done, but got the uh, new tri triangle on there. A massive rotor. Oh, I brought over my rotor. Does that take a while or should we do that another time? Okay, how many teeth are you, is your rotor? Or sorry, your sprocket, yeah. 56 and mine's 48. Or the one I brought is 48. Yeah, so we're gonna swap out the tubes. Possibly the sprocket, kept calling it the rotor because I'm a dummy. And then uh, this company sent me this air compressor to try out. Looks like a little radio. <laughs> so uh, what we're gonna, I brought over both my compressor we'll compare it to this one. dinky tire levers definitely wouldn't have done this job so what did it cost you to get it done at like the local place 30 25 bucks a mm -hmm. tire sometimes that's I worth would, it though i would recommend doing that <laughs> but, but you've done this before yeah it's good to know how to do this so this is the hardest part is putting the tube back in there especially yeah. when you're putting a thicker tube in we got colby over here he's doing it too changing day so this is what friends are for Colby is swapping out or swapping out his tread and my tread is pretty worn out so because he's swapping out his whole tire I'm actually gonna take his tread which has several hundred more miles on it left so might as well while we're taking stuff apart these things always go a lot longer than you think they will all right so I got both my tires off well not me everyone here Everyone's helping everyone. Got the front tire off. You can see the difference in the tubes we're replacing. These are the heavy duty ones. This is the one I just pulled out. You can feel the difference definitely. By the way, I'm gonna get the tube in. And I'll at least get the front tire put back on. Might need some help on the rear tire. So front tire's on, starting to put the back tire on. It's gonna be a tighter fit because the sprocket's bigger, but we don't think we need to add any chain links. It's uh, time to test the air compressors. This is the one I bought off of Amazon. It is a Nolkson, and we're gonna power or uh, pump up Colby's tires to 25. But uh, the company that sent me the other air compressor sent me this oh, flashlight. I don't know. But it's also like a lantern too. You just put this little piece on it. It's a flashlight. Take that off. It's more of a lantern so you can see it's nicely lighting this area. So uh, let's use the Nolkson first to pump up this tire. Oh, 
25 PSI. All right, so this is the Hoto rechargeable air compressor. Um, you just saw my Nolks in one. This is the one that the company sent me to try out. That's the whole reason we were doing this project, taking way longer than we thought it would. But uh, this thing's pretty sweet, like the square design compared to that long tube design of the other one. Um, I haven't even pulled the wrapper off of it yet. But on this, it kind of shows you what you can fill up. You got your uh, basketball bike, which we'll set it to like a little scooter and a car. So I'm guessing those different settings kind of tells you how much air to send through this thing. So we'll turn it on here. All right, so there it is on. It's showing just your PSI. And then what's cool is this knob on this side changes your PSI. So we're gonna go up to 25 PSI. So we'll see if um, I have to change the setting from a basketball to a bike. Let's see if we can get it up there. Yeah, see, there you go. We can go all the way up to a little bit higher, but it's telling me I can't go lower than 25 PSI, so or lower than 30, so we're gonna set it to that. So you can see I'm at right around 22 PSI. So let's pump this thing up. Just like that, 30 PSI. All right, so I have a ways to go on this one. Let's uh, fill it up. All right, so we got a semi-used rear back tire on, but we got those new heavy-duty motorcycle tubes in there. Got a 48 tooth sprocket added, chains all lubed up, tires all filled up. But again, the whole reason why we did this tonight is because I wanted to talk about this Hoto air compressor. It's a rechargeable air compressor with a bunch of different settings on it. So you can set your PSI, you can click through, you can do like a moped, a car, a basketball. If you don't have a setting, then I believe you can just go as high or low as you want. So here we are at like over 100 PSI and lower, but then it has some limits based on these settings here. Um, in comparison to this Nolkson, they're pretty much the same, so it more comes down to design and, and what you like about the design. I'd say this is a little bit more modern. They both charge with USB-C. The one singular advantage to this Nolkson is that it can charge a battery off of the USB port on the back. I don't think that you can do that with this one. Uh, both come with like a, a little flashlight on the top there. This one has one as well. I don't remember how to turn it on. Anyway, so there's a little light to help you, but uh, Hoto also sent me this sweet flashlight too with a pretty modern design. And then of course it comes with all your different adapters as well. So like a basketball, a uh, floating inner tube or something, maybe a uh, paddle board, and then your Schrader valve as well, or Presta valve on that one. The Schrader valve's already on there. So yeah, uh, pretty impressed with it. Also comes with this nice little carrying case there because this has got like this big old screen on there. You don't want to get it all scratched up, but it just kind of comes down to, for me, like form and design. I'm more attracted to this design here, but anyway, that does it for this video. If you're interested in that rechargeable air compressor, I will link it right here. Also a link in the description below, as well as some other links down in the description. Thanks for the lighting over there, Colby. And yeah, those tubes, the heavy duty inner tubes also got those on Amazon. So I'll be sure to link those as well. But thanks again, Hoto, for sending me the flashlight, for sending me the compressor. Uh, definitely gonna be using those. But you know what to do if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Let me know down in the comments below if you're gonna pick up an air compressor. And while you're down there, go ahead and hit that subscribe button.